<laughs> he said, this is the one thing that destroys relationships. And he, and he said, you know, he had a good teaser to get me to click on it, read it. He said that a lot of the liberal feminists are not going to like this essay. And I read it because sometimes I agree with him and sometimes I don't. And I agreed with him. The whole piece is about how men need respect from Ooh. their female partners. And he had this great quote in it where he said, some I, I forget who he was quoting that said, um, sometimes you have to love someone before they can become lovable. And he said, I'm going to take that and, and take it further and say, sometimes you have to respect someone before they can become respectable. And my wife makes me more respectable every day. Wow. By giving me that gift of respect, right? And I don't care if it makes me a square. I think he's right. That's Just based really on, cool. And it, yeah. you know, what? it goes, it goes, it's the opposite of what we hear as women. Like mm -hmm. the, the messaging we're getting is like, don't settle. Men need to treat you like a princess. Do not accept anything less than like a hundred percent loyalty. Um, you know, make him want you play hard to get, um, you know, don't pay for stuff. Like I know some younger women that like their, their standards to me seem like very high in all aspects, looks, job, they've got to be willing to pay for everything. And I want to have six kids. So they need to be like down with that <laughs> or something. And it's, uh, and, and I, I think a lot of the messaging at like young women now is like, you are the prize. You're perfect as you are right at any size, even if you're overweight, you're, you're bravely sized, you know? Right. That and, you uh, have to be completely, um, bowed down to, and treated yeah. differently than you're going to treat your male partner. And yeah, I don't, I, let me ask you this. What the women I know who are in relationships like that, where they don't respect their boyfriend or their husband, they're not actually happy. A lot of them, because that guy may be wrapped around their finger and totally uh, doing a honey do list every day. And, and listen, you know, I've seen couples like that. I used to sell handmade cowboy boots. I would see these couples come in where the sometimes the husband would like try on some boots, find a pair he liked, be all excited to buy them, and then the wife would come in, and not just not just as a partner say, I don't know, I don't know if you should get this, but with contempt on her face, be like, you can't pull that off. What are you doing? Take that off. You look stupid. And it's like that is such a lack shaming. of respect and shaming. Yes. Yeah, and treating them like I, a child, like they're one of the children. Yes, is this the article you're talking about. Yeah, that's it. The most effective way to destroy your husband, ruin your marriage, and encourage infidelity. Whoa. And so those men aren't happy, I think, deep down. But neither are the women. Because they've got a guy who doesn't challenge them, who lets them. How, how can you respect a man like that who, who lays himself down like a carpet? Yeah, look at who, this. A wife who belittles her husband, cuts him down, nit nitpicks him relentlessly, holds her, yeah, withholds her affection, both physical and emotional, as a ransom, nags him endlessly, criticizes him constantly, humiliates him in public. I, I know, I know women in college who have like, they settled yep. down early with guys from school. And this is what I observed. Uh, humiliates them in public and to her friends and in front of the children. Will not allow him to take a leadership position in the home. Cannot be terribly surprised when he begins to withdraw. And if he cheats, which would be a great and indefensible evil, no matter how, no matter how cold and domineering his wife may be, it cannot be said that that he was the first. She cheated him. She lied to him by promising to respect him and treat him like a man only to turn around and treat him like a child. That's exactly what it is. And the marketing that, that women get is very much the man is one of the children. Oh, men are stupid. Like, and I catch myself sometimes thinking these things too, because you're getting these messages mm -hmm. like, Oh, men don't know how to dress themselves. Oh, you have to fix them. You have to like elevate them. And yep. then I talked to, I interviewed like a man's, style expert his name was um fuck tanner guzzi guzzi and <laughs> he's like the last thing any woman should be doing is dressing their husband like that's that's a quick way to make a guy feel bad and to kind of like i guess like ruin the kind of the sexual relationship there because you don't want to be acting like like they're a child he, yeah i agree child, like another dependent like like men are not stupid they're not and like if a man is not prioritizing his clothes, it's because he's prioritizing other stuff like yeah. providing or moving up in his job or other goals. It's not, you know, 
And, I think and there's a difference between switch the thinking, you know? Yeah. You're making me think I had a, this guy I dated for a couple of years. Uh, he didn't know how to, he didn't dress very well. So I did. I dress, I, I feel bad, I guess. I dressed him like, because like we want to help. We want to help. And like women, yes. we, have better, we have a better eye for these things. It's like you're, you see a spill or you see clutter and you clean it up. It's just like women sometimes have a better eye for these things. Yeah. But on the other hand, my husband, he knows how to dress himself. But I will occasionally, because he he has a type of clothing. He likes pearl, pearl button, snap, you know, pearl snap Western shirts. If I see one at Goodwill, a good price, I'm oh. like going to grab that for you. But I'm not like changing his style or anything, you know. Your husband, Carrie, Carrie has a, like, he's very dapper. Like he looks like <laughs> he could have stepped out of like no country for old men. Like he, he's like a cowboy. He's like mysterious. But looks he like looks like Johnny Cash. Yeah. He looks like, but also like, don't fuck with him either. And he's tall <laughs> and kind of is literally the tall, dark and handsome. Like he's literally in a little bit of like a cowboy and he plays music. I'm yeah. feeling real sweet on him tonight. And he was like, what are you guys going to talk about? I was like, I want to talk about yeah. how much I love my husband. And he goes, Woo! I can't do it. But he's like, he does the Fair sad goodness. trombone. No, like guys watching with the sad trombone sound. I can't do it. Like, yeah. I love this. Art. Men have a deep desire for respect. Yeah. And I think we need to do the opposite. I think the fucking psyop on women right now is, is designed to like, Keep women single for for as long as possible. Don't have, don't like, don't start a family. Definitely don't have kids, right? You can think of tons of examples that we get. No, oh, don't yep. reproduce. The, we're overpopulated. You know, your I've, I saw this bullshit lately. Your genes aren't so important that they're worth passing down. Or how dare you have kids and leave them this kind of a world. Uh, with these problems and the climate change and all that fucking bullshit. Overpopulation. Overpopulation, another psyop. And think about, think back to your grandparents, you know, what their relationship was like. Talk to old people. It's literally about like paying the love forward, paying the respect forward, giving them the benefit of the doubt, giving them the trust up front. Not this like sitting on a pedestal and, and waiting for the guy to bring you 100%. Um, mm -hmm. Like, you know, remember your grandma? Like, yeah, it's like, of course you're going to cook and like slave over a meal. And then it's like, oh, and then that would make the guy want to, you know, do something for you in return. Yeah. You know, like fix your car or whatever. Or, uh, and I've definitely been noticing this change and it's, they're pinpointing it at like women our age, like women, like twenties, thirties, forties. Um, I could, I can always talk about how feminism has like fucked things up, but yeah. It's got, it's very insidious. I don't know if that's the right word, but it's really wormed its way into the foundation of, of relationships. It has, but, and think about that because, so if you look at social justice as this sort of umbrella and underneath it, there's all these different uh, identity group movements. And so rate, rate, there's the critical race theory part of it, Black Lives Matter part of it. There's the feminist part of it. There's the gay and lesbian LGBT part of it. The race part of it, that was much easier for them to divide us along racial lines, you know, based on like to create all this racial animosity, white people are like this, black people are like this. It was harder. And they've even said the social justice people, a lot of these feminist writers, they've even said it has been harder for them to divide us um, along sex lines, like men versus women, mm. because we so, because of so many naturally like heterosexual relationships because we're quote unquote sleeping with the enemy is the way they put it. Yeah. And so that a lot. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so that's been much harder to, to, to kind of sow that division and, and get one sex to hate the other and vice versa. But they're starting to do that. I think they're being, they're much more successful with it in the past few years than they've been for a long time. And some of that has to do with them, completely destroying the ideas of um, gender, gender roles, you know, biological sex itself. Like they're just, they're like, okay, if we can't, if we can't pit men against women, let's just say men and women don't exist. And then anybody can be whatever they want. And yeah. And I don't know. They, they made a lot of headway with Trump. Like remember how many articles we'd see, like Trump is breaking up my marriage you know, do, you know, I, I would even see Glamour or Marie Claire putting out articles like, mm -hmm. you know, why you need to dump your Trump supporting boyfriend. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, really, 
pretty close to that title. Um, you're getting encouragement to to break up with your boyfriend from an outside source, from strangers, people you'll never yeah. meet, telling you to end a relationship because of political beliefs. That is crazy propaganda. Um, back to this article, and we're talking about this. Is it instead they learn often from their own mothers, from the media, from television, advertisements, academia, and so on, that men are worthless oafs who should be handled accordingly until they prove themselves worthy of better treatment. Like, fucking take that in. That sounds that sounds abusive. Like, you're out the gate. It sounds like you're dealing with someone who doesn't even like you, yeah. doesn't even respect you out of the gate. Yeah, my husband will be respected if he earns it, the wife declares. Let him do the chores I assign to him. Let him accomplish everything I require. Let him dance to my tune. And then perhaps I'll reward him like a circus animal with little pellets of respect. Um, that's not the right approach. A husband does not need to earn his wife's respect any more than a wife needs to earn her husband's love. A wife ought to respect her husband because he is because he is her husband, just as he ought to love her because she is his wife. Your husband might deserve it when you mock him, berate him, belittle him. And nag him, but don't marry someone in order to give them what they deserve. In marriage, you give them what you promised. Ooh. Ooh, goosebumps. <laughs> I think true. Matt Walsh is like making marriage and conservatism cool again. I, I think yes. the Sobeek is also like just tweets, messages. Um, I think these are all in all like kind of respectable guys to look up to. Well, yeah, because the culture, I think, moves so far away from uh, what used to be the majority opinion or, you know, the, the traditional values, et cetera. We moved so far away from that that now it's rebellious to be, to have traditional values, to be conservative. There, there are people like myself who were leftists for so long that I used to joke that, like, conservative uh, conservative belief system or even Christianity or something, that that's, like, the one niche society that I hadn't really been in yet. You know, there's all these different, like, like in LA anyway, and in working in entertainment, everybody's in all these different crazy stuff. Right. You know, and, and working the job I did with comedians who also had a toe in the burlesque world. And um, I, I saw, I saw a lot, I saw everything. And, and it, I don't, I'm not sure how I'm not phrasing this right, Chris. You have to help me out. But it was basically like at one point I was talking to these Christian ladies. And I'm like, Christianity is like the the weirdest subculture that I've never been in. So <laughs> because because all that stuff is tired and boring now. And the mainstream has drifted so far over there. And for whatever reason, I had this prejudice against, uh, I don't know, like a lot of people who ca who came up with feminism. I had this prejudice against everything that was considered traditional or old fashioned and without really investigating it or knowing why it was just sort of, well, that's an old fashioned way of thinking. That's the patriarchy. That's so-and-so. And now when I look at something like this, like what Mash Matt Walsh is saying, I'm like, that makes sense. I've lived long enough to see that if you don't respect your husband or your boyfriend, it will kill your relationship. If yeah. you have contempt Contempt, I've heard Jordan Peterson say, contempt is the one thing. He's done a lot of marriage counseling. He's like, contempt is the one thing you can't come back from. Right. Because how do you how do you unravel that? And like my parents were such a perfect example. Like it was just years of contempt. It was I was just constantly watching each of their respective resentments being acted out every day. And it's from yeah. shit that's from that's so ingrained. That's foundational. Like the resentment was foundational to their relationship. They could never, nor were they trying to get out from under it. Cause it yeah. was like, it was like, I've been wronged. So I'm going to take back my power in this way. I've been wronged. I'm going to take, I'm going to get mine in this way. Like, fuck you. It was like a constant exchange of, of like low key fuck yous basically. Yeah. I saw that as well. And, it, and how do you come back from that? How do you come back from the eye roll at your spouse belittling or mocking your spouse in front of someone else, like putting them down. You're supposed to be the person that has their six all the time. Like a unit. Did you say have their six? Yeah. Is that a phrase? I don't know. Oh yeah. Like, like your six o'clock. It's like watching your back. I've never heard that. Is that a Southern thing? It's a gun thing. Ooh. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, you're supposed to. So Chrissy, I will always have your six as a friend and as a, 
spouse, I mean, that is the per above anyone else. Your spouse is supposed to have your six. They, they're not supposed to be the ones sh gunning you down in front of other people for cheap, you know, entertainment points at a party or whatever. They're the, they're wow. your, you know, they are your partner. Right. And especially like doing it in front of your, your kids. Cause you're just so comfortable, right? This is family life. You do whatever you are, who you are in front of your kids. But what I don't think my mom didn't realize is like, was the message that she was sending me. Like there was no like upfront benefit of the doubt, respect, good treatment. It was all just like, I am, I've been pissed at you for X, Y, and Z thing for a number of years. Mm. Um, and they fought in front of you and stuff. Oh yeah. Just really loudly. Like, you know, the house wasn't big. So if they were, you know, raising their voices and fighting, it's like, it didn't take much to hear it, but it was like constantly sarcastic. I mean, who knows, maybe in a sense it helped me develop my sarcastic sense of humor and like the way that we would like roast each other. Yeah. Maybe it helps. It helps me now, you know, that we would, pick on each other so much it wasn't all bad it was fun we'd all kind of like rag on each other but as an adult in a relationship now looking at my parents relationship I'm like oh they were not at all uplift uplifting each other in like the way a woman needs to uplift a man and the way a man needs to mm -hmm. uplift a woman like you have to you know you have to see that that quote about well first of all I think you're right your sense of humor I think um just just today I was talking with a uh, Cameron Pasha and he was talking about how poetry comes from pain. And sometimes comedy is the same way. Some of the best comedy, you know this, it's a comedian. It comes from painful things and you adapt and you learn how to use humor. And and so there are always silver linings, I think, to be found and stuff like that. So that's, that's first of all. And then the other thing was, oh, what was the other thing? I forget. Anyway, it'll come back <laughs> to me. Wait a second. You were talking about sarcasm and humor and... And it's mm. informing my sense of humor. You were talking about Yeah, that. and in a relationship, uh, there was something I was coming to there. It's too late, and I've only had one Red Bull. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Somebody okay. says I got my 12. I, got I don't know six. that. I got your six, but you got my nine. Um, God, this is like sad. Like the end of this article is kind of sad. Like, um, he's talking about how he has a great relationship with his wife and she respects him. Yada, yada. Sadly, the average man in America is not always given this advantage. He enters marriage and finds himself immediately in a hole. He must prove his worth if he wants to be treated like he has any. His wife paints a line on the floor and expects him to walk it perfectly, but he will inevitably stumble as all men and women do. And his wife will chastise him and use his mistake as blackmail against him. Holy fuck. A man in the situation is called none called nonetheless to endure to fight for his family and never to be unfaithful to his wife or leave her. But if he does wander, it should be noted that he is not the only traitor in the marriage. She betrayed him. She promised a she promised him a wife and instead gave him a stepmother. The two have now betrayed each other in their own way. Woo! Yeah. True. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Okay, good. So, <laughs> I think that in a in a relationship, the part of the piece where he's talking about sometimes you have to give someone respect before they can become more respectful. Like the very act of you showing them that or giving them love for them to become more lovable. I do believe that's true. It, it depends. It's a case by case thing, but I do believe that's true. And I was talking to a friend who, who's dating this guy who's got some problems and the problems seem to be getting a little worse. And I was just saying to her, um, this may not work. Sometimes there's a guy who just has, there's too many things going on and they're not willing to work on themselves and you should just give it up. But sometimes it really is like looking inside of them and helping them to see themselves as a better person. Because you know when a person's in the bottom and they can't see themselves as a good. Right. And if you can see that in them and bring it out of them, like like look at them and say, I, look, I know you have all these things you're dealing with, but I see, I see you and I that's see that most, you're a good man. That's the most valuable thing. To me, that's like the ultimate gift. Mm -hmm. Like, like you're chipping, everyone's got stuff. Everyone goes through depression, weight, weight gain, crazy grief, loss, um, all of it. Right. Especially in the last couple of years, we've all at least experienced yes. like <laughs> one of those things. And, um, if you can just like, yeah, if you keep just do your best to hold that like baseline, like respect and love, 
That way, when someone starts building up something around them, you can go, no, I see you. I'm going to help. I'm going to help pull you out of this. I'm going to help chip away this, this stuff that's not serving you to help like lighten your load. And that's, that's something that has nothing to do with like, you know, chores or sex or right. Yeah. You know, like the fun stuff. That's like, that's the real BFF partnership. Like that's, that's where you get realist that, stuff. That's where you get to that place where you hear people say, you know, you make me, he makes me want to be a better version of myself or she makes me want to be a better version of myself and be the person they think I am. That That's exactly what that means because they're looking at you and they are seeing all the good potential and not in a negative way. Like if only you fix these things, but in like, I see who you are and I see you're a good person and you are strong and you are these things that like society is telling men they're not right now, you know, and like chipping mm -hmm. that stuff down. So I don't know. I just think it depends on the person. Yes. But I think sometimes that's what some relationships are missing. And no, you're not going to hear that in feminism at all. You're not going to hear that in the current culture at all. Because like, you know what? You can't, you can't sell anything with that messaging with feminism. Guess what? You can sell women a ton more shit. You can be like, invest <laughs> in yourself, go to Sephora, yeah. spend, spend a fortune on shit. I mean, like, Good, you know, buy all the clothes, buy all the purses, like buy yourself everything that they're not getting for you. You know, like feminism, it sells you more stuff than than uh, like respecting your guy and working on shit like that's not as right. Sexy. That's yeah. like that's a night in talking and like, you know, crying <laughs> and working some shit out. It's not like going out, getting drunk, you know, drunk shopping or, you know. Yeah. Do you. <laughs> yeah, you do you, do girl. You. Yeah. Oh, my God. You doing you is always a, always an expense. 